Welcome to the Federal Highway Administration's informational DVD on shoulder and center line rumble strips and rumble stripes. The purpose of this video, Rumble Strips, a sound investment, is to introduce you to a cost-effective treatment that has been proven to provide results by saving lives. On an average day in the United States, one roadway injury occurs every 43 seconds and one roadway departure fatality every 23 minutes. Runoff the road crashes are truly a national problem. About one third of all fatal crashes are single vehicle runoff the road crashes. That statistics becomes even more alarming when you look at the rural areas. I think we need to get away from that philosophy that deaths on our highway are acceptable. They're not. They're just as tragic as the homicides and suicides and those kinds of tragedies. The National Safety Council estimates that the financial cost for roadway departure crashes is more than $100 billion per year. This figure includes costs covering property damage, lost wages and productivity, medical expenses, administrative expenses, and employee costs, to name a few. Something must be done. So let's start from the beginning. What actually causes a roadway departure? It could be an intentional maneuver to avoid an imminent hazard, such as another vehicle or a foreign object on the road. Or it could be due to an environmental condition, such as sliding off the road after hitting a patch of ice, or driving off the edge of the pavement in thick fog or smoke, or veering around an animal that has darted out into the roadway. There are always the unintentional reasons as well. Maybe a vehicle has a tire blowout, or some other type of malfunction. But the most lethal type, and fortunately also the most preventable and correctable, are the drift off the road crashes. These deadly departures can normally be attributed to driver fatigue, including fatigue induced by alcohol and drugs, drowsiness, inattentiveness, carelessness, or just plain distraction. Drowsy drivers are much harder to identify and may not themselves recognize the danger they are putting themselves and other motorists in. They don't realize sleep is not an expendable part of their lives that could mean the difference between life and death. The life-saving effectiveness of rumble strips has been proven. In fact, the Federal Highway Administration's goal, along with that of State Departments of Transportation, County, and City Highway Agencies, is to educate drivers on the second chance that rumble strips and rumble stripes provide. Since many of the causes of drift off the road crashes were believed to be correctable, individual state transportation and road authorities began experimenting with applications of rumble strips. One of the things that came to our attention that was being done in Pennsylvania at the time they were experimenting with it was uh, shoulder rumble strips to uh, try to alert drivers who were sleepy, drowsy, or otherwise inattentive that they were running off the road. So in 1990, we did a short one-mile test zone down around Kingston on the thruway. That was an area over a three-year period. In a one-mile zone, they had 19 fall asleep crashes in the three years prior to 1990. And in three years after 1990, in that one mile zone, we had zero. Road authorities have discovered that the use of shoulder rumble strips provides the opportunity to alert the drowsy or distracted driver. But who else can they help? For one, rumble strips provide the means to warn drivers who may have drifted out of the travel lanes due to changing weather conditions, such as wind, fog, rain, sleet, or snow. But don't just take our word for it. Listen to what happened to Chuck Benson, a professional truck driver. Winter driving, you can't always see the edge of the road. Sometimes you can't even see the travel lane that you're in. Uh, as soon as you hit, get off that shoulder a little bit, you hear that noise, that vibration, you know exactly where you're at, so it gives you an awareness of that. Uh, you could also have that in uh, rainy weather or foggy weather where you don't have a clear view of the roadway. Now that we've discussed the ways in which rumble strips can help improve the safety of our nation's highways, let's take a deeper look at how they achieve these goals. So, can we reduce run-off-the-road injury and fatality crashes? The solution is to identify and implement both reactive and proactive measures. 
Reactive measures include removing fixed objects from the clear zone or shielding or making them forgiving. This practice evolved in the 1960s and has been successfully used by state transportation and road agencies ever since. Road shoulder and centerline rumble strips are a proactive measure as they actually help to prevent drivers from leaving the travel lanes of the main roadway. With the growing record of independently documented state and federal studies on the effectiveness of rumble strips, an increase in the installation of rumble strips on many high volume roads throughout the nation has occurred over the past 10 years. As a result of the effectiveness of rumble strips, efforts have recently led to the installation of rumble strips on many two lane rural roadways as well. In recent years, a further enhancement to rumble strips has been implemented in many jurisdictions, the rumble stripe. A rumble stripe consists of painting a line over the top of a rumble strip. This stripe adds a visual element to the sound and vibration of the rumble strip. In a rigorous analysis of crash data from Minnesota performed in 2006, there was a 13% reduction in total single vehicle runoff the road crashes and an 18% reduction for injury single vehicle runoff the road crashes. This was realized after installing shoulder rumble strips on 183 miles of two lane rural highways. This analysis was supported by several studies which all reported reductions in runoff the road crashes after the implementation of shoulder rumble strips. The success of shoulder rumble strips appears to have led several states to require the incorporation of shoulder rumble strips on 3R projects, that is, resurfacing, restoration, and rehabilitation on limited access roadways. Centerline rumble strips have also been shown to reduce the number of centerline crossover crashes. In a study performed by the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety in 2003, using data from several states, it was found that there was an overall 25% reduction in head-on and opposing direction side swipe injury collisions. Now that we've discussed the shoulder and center line rumble strips ability to save lives, you may ask, what is the financial cost for these treatments? We think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Many studies on shoulder rumble strips show a very high benefit cost ratio, which makes them among the most cost effective safety treatments available. This makes shoulder rumble strips more cost effective than any other safety treatments, such as guardrails, culvert end treatments, and slope flattening. In a Maine Department of Transportation survey of 50 state DOTs, a benefit-cost ratio of 50 to 1 for milled rumble strips on rural interstates nationwide was identified. The one drawback that transportation and road authorities have found with respect to rumble strips and rumble stripes is the potential for noise issues, especially within an urban environment. The rumbling noise caused by vehicles running over the strips can be disturbing to surrounding residential neighborhoods. However, treatments exist to help mitigate this. Let's take a look at some potential solutions. There was a concern on the throughways part because of complaints that we received about the noise that the rumble strips caused. In response to those complaints, we did go out, we did observe that, in fact, they were legitimate. And as a result of that, we originally had placed the shoulder rumble strips four inches off the edge of pavement. Now, with any installation and the old ones, we went back and redid them. On the right shoulder, we placed them 16 inches off the edge of pavement. On the left shoulder, 12 inches off the edge of pavement. And we found that that significantly reduces the uh, inadvertent hits of people just drifting slightly off the pavement. Now that we've shown how rumble strips can be used to help increase the level of safety and reduce crashes, let's address how the rumble strips work. When a vehicle's tire is driven along a rumble strip, an audible rumbling is produced along with a noticeable vibration in the vehicle. When the rumble strips are properly designed and installed, the noise and vibration produced by the strips can be very effective in providing motorists with a warning to alert them to correct their vehicle's direction and place themselves back within the lane. Some road authorities have concerns about the potential negative effects that rumble strips might have on the stability of road shoulders. These concerns, however, have not been substantiated. In fact, many jurisdictions found that when properly installed, rumble strips do not undermine the roadway shoulder, nor do they require increased maintenance. 
Similarly, there has been no evidence of maintenance problems with respect to the pavement joint in conjunction with centerline rumble strips. Concerns have also been expressed about the use of rumble strips and stripes and their effects on motorcycles, bicycles, and their riders. While not all rumble strip designs are compatible with these vehicles, guidance from AASHTO and some state DOTs is available to aid in the design of bicycle-friendly rumble strips and stripes for use on non-access controlled highways. Now that we've presented how the rumble strips and rumble stripes actually work, let's get into some details about their design. Because there are a number of different ways in which a rumble strip can be designed and implemented, they can be broken down into groups, including milled, rolled, formed, and raised. Milled and rolled are the most widely used type of rumble strips, so we will concentrate on those. So, how are they designed? Milled rumble strips are designed so they can be installed on existing road shoulders or on new road shoulders. A milling machine cuts individual strips into the roadway by shaving down the asphalt. Rolled rumble strips, however, can only be installed on a new road shoulder before it is cured. This is because the strips are actually pressed or rolled into the asphalt using a rolling compactor with a specially designed roller. While rolled rumble strips are in use in some jurisdictions, in various tests and applications, it has been found that milled rumble strips are more effective than rolled. We have found the milled rumble strips are probably the most effective and the most widely used here in the Northeast. A Virginia study showed that the milled were 12.6 times rougher than the rolled rumble strips. The study also showed that the milled were 3.4 times the decibel level of rolled. Rumble stripes can be painted over the top of milled or rolled rumble strips. These stripes add a visual cue to augment the vibratory and auditory aspects of the rumble strip. The basic design of a rumble strip can be explained in five elements. Spacing, longitudinal width, transverse width, tire drop, and depth. Center-lined rumble strips are very similar in design to that of shoulder rumble strips. However, they're placed down the middle of the roadway. We hope that we've shown you how rumble strips and rumble stripes are cost-effective tools that should be considered by all transportation and road authorities in the United States. With benefit cost ratios between 30 to 1 and 60 to 1, rumble strips and rumble stripes have been proven to save lives by increasing driver awareness, do not require additional maintenance, and have other added benefits such as being a positive guidance tool in poor visibility. If you would like to explore rumble strips and rumble stripes in greater detail, please visit FHWA's website or type FHWA rumble strip into your favorite internet search engine. Thank you for taking the time to view this presentation.